This week on the Music Biz Weekly podcast, we really dive into bands in town with managing partner for Bree Sargent, and he takes us into what's going on at bands in town right now. Welcome to the Music Biz Weekly podcast, founded in 2011 and with over 500 weekly episodes, where Michael Brandvold and Jay Gilbert, two longtime music industry pros, discuss the very latest trends, tools, and tactics that you Build need. Build a stunning band website in minutes with Bandzoogle. Go to bandzoogle.com to start your free 30-day trial and use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. You got Mike, you got Jay, and... Before we get too far, if my voice craps out on me here, I apologize. I'm just coming out of COVID again, and my voice is just, <clears throat> it's, a, it's, it's a knot, it's raw, it's not used to talking. Yeah, but it sounded like Barry White the other day. That was pretty Oh sexy. my God, yes. When I, like the first day after it, and I started talking, my daughter started cracking up. She was like, what is that? What's your voice? I sounded like Barry White. It was great. <laughs> was For those like, that don't oh know, Mike sent me a video of him with his uh, sexy low voice. It was uh, it was pretty cool. Anyway, so big shout out to Bruce and everybody at HypeBot and Bands in Town. Thank you for your support. And, of course, to today's sponsors, Bandzoogle.com. For over 20 years, Bandzoogle has made it easy to build a stunning website and online store for your music. Now they've added a brand new EPK plan so that musicians can create a professional single-page electronic press kit in minutes. All the features you need to design an EPK are already built in, including fully customizable templates, preset EPK page layouts, music players, images, text bio, and video embeds. A gig calendar and press quotes are also available. And, of course, access to Banzoogle's amazing award-winning tech support team seven days a week. The new EPK plans start at just $6.95 per month. And Music Biz Weekly podcast listeners can head over to Banzoogle.com, sign up, try it for free for 30 days, and use the promo code MUSICBIZEPK, all one word, Get 10% off the first year of your new EPK plan subscription. That's banzoogle.com, promo code MUSICBIZEPK when you sign up for the EPK plan. And, of course, thank you to discmakers.com. As you know, vinyl's been mostly a label product up until now. High prices, tight supply with resulting long lead times. I've got many independent artists largely on the sidelines. Yet these independent artists want and need to sell vinyl, but many of them just don't end up moving forward. Why? Again, because of the price and the turnaround times. Most artists don't know how many records they'll sell, so they want to start with the smallest quantity possible to test the waters. Waters. Up until recently, 100 records at discmakers.com would cost you nearly $2,000. That's a lot of money especially compared to what 100 CDs would cost you from Disc Makers at just 149 bucks. So Disc Makers decided to rip the Band-Aid off and launched an entry-level vinyl strategy, perfect for independent artists, an offer of 100 vinyl records for just $1,299. So head over to DiscMakers.com and place your order for 100 vinyl LPs for $1,299. bucks. Jay. Who's joining us this week? Well, we've got Fabrice Surgent from Bands in Town. He's the uh, managing partner there. And it's a, such a great conversation about a platform that you and I rave about and that we actually use every day. Yeah, he gives us uh, talks about the Spotify integration and kind of tips his hat to some of the things coming down the road here as well. So let it roll and we'll see you at the end. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate it. Today, we are joined by Bands in Town Managing Partner and our friend Fabrice Surgeon. Fabrice, good to see you. Hi, Michael. Hi, Jay. Good to see you, too. Thanks thanks for joining us, Fabrice. My pleasure. Yeah, so, well, let's kick it off. You know, oh, go ahead, Mike. No, I was going to go, go ahead. Go ahead a, there's a little bit of a lag here. Um, no, we just want to sort of kick it off. There's so much we could talk to you about, but... You've had you've announced some big news lately. You want to tell our uh, viewers about it? Yeah. Now, when artists um, 
list a tour date on Benzin Town for artists on the artist dashboard. It gets automatically listed, obviously, across our own platform, but also on Spotify. So it's a strategy where we want artists to publish their tour date once, and we take care of the rest. It goes everywhere. So we had the agreements with Apple, in particular Shazam and Apple Maps, many Apple platforms, Microsoft, some other, other partners. But Spotify is definitely an important and meaningful addition to the uh, audience of the tour dates list, listed by, by artists on Benzin Town for Artists. I assume you guys have been working on trying to get that in place for quite a while. Look, we, we, we've been indeed doing integration with platforms for a while. And these platforms do not necessarily prioritize live music uh, as, 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 a, as an important aspect of their product offering. Um, it sounds very sometimes odd to say so, but I think it was not a priority at Spotify for years, to be honest. It, it, it turned out to be more of a priority over the last 24 months, I guess. And, and so, yeah, this, this integration takes time, effort, but it's, um, yeah. we, we have quite of an expertise in this. We, we, you know, first of all, Benzinton for Artists, our artist platform is actually integrated with Benzinton Concert, our consumer platform, right? So because we are a platform, we probably understand better the needs and the challenges of other platforms. Uh, one thing that uh, is, is key in particular is the structuring of the data. And so even though it's, it's a, yes, it's a long time coming, this integration from a technical point of view took not so much time. I mean, it, it was pretty easy they, they, they would, on both sides. So it's it's uh, it's yeah. something that i guess it's a, it's a big big progress for 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 the artist that we represent um yeah but it's also a clear signal that spotify is taking live music very seriously which is well, talk a little bit about i know you have a lot of innovations uh, that have been happening but let's back up a little bit for those that aren't familiar talk about what bands in town is but also sort of how people like Michael and I use bands in town as a marketing tool. Cause it's kind of a dual personality. Sure. We have actually three stakeholders uh, that take advantage of this bands in town marketplace. In a way. The first ones are consumers, 85 million registered users uh, can you know, search for primary ticketing, official ticket sellers uh, across our websites, mobile websites and apps. And because of that, we send 15 million people to concert ticket to tickets every month, to buy tickets every month. We we have we recommended concert last year 3.8 billion times. So we not only help fans follow their favorite artists sync their account with their favorite music streaming companies, but they also can uh, discover new acts with the platform. And that's Benzin Town Concerts. The second platform, which you refer to, Michael, or Jay, sorry, is the, right. is the um, Benzin Town for Artists platform. It's a full dashboard that is only artist verified. So we verify artists and then the or their teams, and they get access to a whole set of tools to publish tour dates, to message fans directly, because it's free to post messaging to fans on bands in town, and then to disseminate tour dates across the artist's properties. And that's very important too. We provide widget, API, <clears throat> smart link you can post on socials. And we ask the artists to fill up their profile with a lot of metadata, such as their Spotify link, their Apple Music links, all their genre, their, their you know, similar artists, a lot of things that are so critical 
to help not only the artists being discovered on Benzington, the recommendation engine I was talking about earlier, but also that helps artists see their data, their tour dates on other platforms. And I, I would like here for the sake of this podcast specifically elaborate for a second on this. Sure. Um, the more artists use Benzington tools, the more likely they are to be surfaced across our platforms and third-party platform. In other words, if you create your account, you add your Spotify link, there's a greater chance that you're going to show up on Spotify with the right tour dates. Because we we have to have metadata to match the right events with the right artist page on third-party platforms, right? And part of the issues that Spotify had so far is that they didn't have lots of metadata coming from their uh, current uh, source of data such as the ticketing companies and stuff that had that do not have an artist verified platform right so it's super important that when our listeners and or your clients um open their account on Benzington, super important to fill up that profile it's also interesting and important to increase the number of followers on Benzington because that's a key element to our automated recommendation engine to detect uh, motion and to recommend events. So how do you get followers? Well, by installing the widget, by using the API, by promoting, in fact, your tour dates using our tools. So it's a whole ecosystem that is completely free for the artist. And the third stakeholder are the venues and the promoter, which are the ones who are paying campaigns to be uh, potentially surfaced across the Benzinton ecosystem. Uh, we have a specific dashboard to verify venue. Uh, and we have specific offers for venues and promoters to promote their events when they need to. Are you guys now exclusive with Spotify? Because anybody who's been on there for a while knows another partner was working with providing those tour dates. Are you now the exclusive source? No, none of these relationships are exclusive, um, but we are the only artist verified source. So in, it, it's it's only on Benzington that artists can add their tour dates and be guaranteed to see such dates surfaced on Spotify. So there's the, the, the rest of Spotify integration, direct integration are essentially ticketing companies uh, so they do have direct integration with some ticketing companies, not all of them. So it's it's possible that Spotify gets twice the same data, and they have their own rules to display such uh, such data. But what I can guarantee is that the type of artist matching and even to artist matching technology that we provide is the most efficient as at getting the data surfaced on Spotify. So the, there's no question that if an artist lists a tour date on Benzington, it will be surfaced on Spotify, right? Yeah. Unless there's a, there's a, I mean, there's always exceptions and we are trying to eliminate them, but that's, that's a big progress that Spotify made by integrating Benzington. Yeah, I really enjoy using bands in town to sort of see who's coming to town and what shows I should go to, because it's surprising how many times I'll be notified through bands in town. Oh, crowded house is coming to town and, and I like crowded house. And it's like, well, wait a second. How did I not know about that? You know, some of these other marketing tactics are sort of failing at least reaching me, but yet bands in town always seems to know which artists I love and which ones are, are coming to town. But as Michael and I were talking before we hit record, we use bands in town a lot to make sure that the artists that we represent, that we're not only making sure that they their fans know they're coming to town, but mm -hmm. also we know that fans of, you know, Ann Wilson will also be fans of Heart and vice versa. So we can target, you know, fan bases of other audiences talk talk a little bit about how people use uh bands in town sort of creatively to reach their their audience sure the the first thing artists get and fans therefore is a lot of free and automated recommendation that we provide to our fans you know when they announce a show there will be 
an automated email that goes to all the followers to announce the show when the show goes on sales or pre-sale or on sale or um, if fans RSVP to the show, they will be reminded a week before automatically without any efforts from the artist team. Then artists can indeed trigger themselves um, messaging to the fans. As I said, they can message and post to those fans for free based on the geo where they live and based on their RSVPs. I know artists, I always take the same example, but artists who ask their fans who are RSVP'd to dress in white or to buy the merch piece that goes with the show. Uh, because you can target the RSVPs, the fans that shows intends to come to the show on a very specific geo, on the first spe very specific show. And then if you need to boost attendance, or if you want to expand the artist reach um, beyond the core following, there are options to buy campaigns to reach fans of similar artists. We call them affinity artists. Affinity fans, I'm sorry. And this is something very sophisticated. It's it's also it's the same recommendation engine that we use to recommend to recommend shows to our fans. So it's a recommendation engine that it's it's essentially an AI that has been built over the last seven years uh, across 85 million profile, trying to understand what are their music preferences um, and what music shall we recommend. And we improved it uh, step by step by checking, you know, how many ticket clicks, how many tickets sold we generated or RSVPs so that we can benchmark the efficiency of those recommendations and improve them. So that's a proprietary technology that no one else has when it relates to live music. You know, some obviously DSPs can recommend uh, recorded music, but believe it or not, this is not the same. It's slightly different from live music. Fabrice, back to the Spotify integration. One of the things that I love about Bands in Town is you've got a, a, a very robust insights dashboard yeah. um, where you can get lots of data on your fans, even just data on your social networks if you've connected them in your profile and stuff like that. Are you going to be able to provide any sort of insights as to how many ticket links are clicked on your Spotify page so an artist can see if that Spotify profile is actually delivering them ticket mm -hmm. links? No, not in the short term. Um, I understand where you're coming from with this question. It's a very legitimate concern. Uh, I would ask this question to Spotify as well because they must have some some element of data, uh, not in the short term. We we trying right now. We are still in the in the phase when we have to connect the world to Benzin Town. So in other words, we did add Apple as a platform. I say Apple because it's beyond. It's not only Shazam or Apple Maps. It's it's the entire Apple ecosystem. We had to connect with Microsoft. We had to connect. There, there's more more ecosystem that we're connecting to, so we're we're still in that initial phase. I think it's gonna improve step by step. Uh, we will we will make it more efficient for artists step by step. Um, right now, it's the goal is really to to enable to reach a billion fan. Um, you know, by the end of this year, by publishing a tour date through Benzin Town for artists, and so. You know, it's 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 a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. You know, when I look at the bands in town, just the main page, and I've been going there a lot more lately. Typically, I would just go look at my artists in bands in town and yeah. or I'd look at the dashboard and that. But what I love about this main page, and I'd love to have you talk about it a little bit, is it's, it's got some recommendations, some really cool recommendations. And it also shows me what's going on here where I live and then some local venues. Talk a little bit about that feature, because I haven't spent a lot of time on it, but I certainly am now. Well, we, we added, uh, so on your, on your homepage, when you're logged in, it's the same experience as the one that you might have on using the app. <clears throat> I would recommend always and still to use the app, which is the one that enables you to get the best of the experience, to sync, to easily sync your music accounts, such as Spotify, which 
has been a partner for many years on that front. But, yeah. And also Apple Music and Amazon Music were the only ones who have so many integrations with third party music systems. And so on the, but on the website, you can do the same. You can log in or create an account, log in as a fan and, and indeed sync your music accounts and everything. Then you get a much more personalized experience. We're able to recommend you shows based on your music, we call it your music DNA. Your music graph is a very complex system of your music preference that we enrich with everything we know about people like you. And then, so recommended for you is that section. Uh, popular is more, you know, what's going on in your city and, and locally based on how many RSVPs we get for those shows. Uh, we added last year a dimension that was, I have to say, probably, um, I guess, underinvested on Ben's intent, which was local venues. We 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 are we are strong partner and supporter of the National Independent Venue Association. We feel that local venues are really at the heart of artist discovery. And they are in, they are the the land the 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 head a city breathe and and discover new, fresh music, fresh people. So they are critical to our societies, to our ecosystem, to our communities. We added venues for that reason. Of course, they are all venues, not only the members of, of NIVA, but we, 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 do, uh, we, would, we do work specifically on, on those independent venues. So yeah. those venues now appear and you can follow a venue, which is new. You can bookmark and favorite uh, a venue so that if you like a particular venue near where you live or something that relates to your music dates, you can specifically follow that venue from the homepage of the app or the homepage of the website. Fabrice, you mentioned uh, in passing, and I'm not sure I was aware of this, that on the consumer app, the recommended shows are based on the number of RSVPs to a show. Is mm -hmm. that correct? So that's a the, big the popular benefit. Shows, the popular shows. Po po the popular shows. Yeah. yeah. Popular yes. shows are based on who's getting more RSVPs. So um, that's a reason why an artist should push their fans to actually click RSVP. Oh, absolutely. Because it, it, it will push their show up in popularity for more recommendations. Correct. We 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 tend, thank you for asking, Michael. It's it's we tend to really recommend the artists to instead install their widget and their APIs on the websites, but also include on those widgets and API the RSVP button and not all, because it's optional. And we leave that optionality because a lot of these managers and artists only wants to see buy tickets. I think it's a mistake. My advice is that RSVP builds what we call the top of funnel. So it, it captures intent at a moment when fans may not be decided or, or set on buying a ticket. So when you have two buttons that say one says RSVP or set reminder, or we, we call it in, in very different ways, you can personalize this customize this um, and buy tickets, you're not cannibalizing ticket sales. You're building an audience that you can activate later to eventually sell that ticket. And indeed, by pushing fans to RSVP, you're also growing popularity in the system and, and get more tickets sold because the system, bends in town, the algorithm, will recommend you much more across the platform. So there are many benefits. You 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 named it, Michael. So, so and and okay. and if and if if an art if an artist has a show from a year ago that they had three hundred people RSVP to, and they're coming back now, they can go back and message all those RSVPs Correct. from a year ago and say, "Hey, we're coming back for another show." Correct. Correct. Remember, we grew with this belief that. In order to build sustainable future, artists need to own their data. So on bands in town, they can message all the fans for free. They can, that we call it post. They can message the RSVPs, including the past RSVPs, which is a, a you know, very valuable piece of data. Sure. Uh, and 
they can, if they use our tools, they can also capture first party data because in, if they capture email or phone number, they can download those emails and phone number onto their own systems to remarket such fans, provided obviously fans gave them the permission to remarket such fans um, to sell merch or to announce an album or to do other things. So it's a full suite that starts from data collections, uh, activations, and then potentially later on remarketing that we offer to these artists when they use the platform. Uh, yeah. You know, from yeah. A to Z. Fabrice, talk a little bit about the individual artist pages, because I think this is one of the strengths of, of bands in town is you know, you can you can go to bands in town and just look up your favorite artists, which is great. But talk about if you're a marketer and let's say you have um, several artists that you manage. Mm -hmm. um, what can you do with those artist pages? Can you add, you know, bio links, images? What can you do with that page? Yeah, you can you can not only personalize it from an identity standpoint, so the right picture, the right bio, of course, the basic links that you want to add. And again, we, we ask you to add those links for many reasons, including synchronization with the other platforms. We also now offer full integration uh, for merch. So that's, that's, uh, that's something we added last year as well. If an artist um, use Shopify, or has merch on Amazon merch, on Amazon basically, um, it can very easily sync its own merch and select its merch to, to appear on its on its page. So it, it pretty much covers music links, displays merch, displays events, obviously, and all the bio and information you want to or need to have. And and I, I can attest the the merch integration Super simple. I did it with my client's fog hat and um, they were surprised, pleasantly surprised that like within the first week they had orders coming in that had tagged that it was a bands in town link that was clicked for the, the merchandise purchase. So they were really excited to see that. Well, I'm excited too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like to hear that. Um, it takes time to educate uh, fans about new features so it's it's good that you have you've had this experience it's now we we merch is new on benzene town it started last year um i we are we are right now doing a lot of efforts to convince artists to sync their merch uh, store to potentially market it we launched also last year a new feature called release which is a way to drop merch so you can essentially post on social with a release um, and, and so it, it, it can count down to the day of the release and alert fans when the release is happening, uh, it, it can alert via email or via text. And so that release is also an, an interesting companion or marketing tool to a, to the merch page, basically that we help sync on Benz in Yeah. Um, Fabrice, you know, this is kind of asking you a question, which I probably know the answer, but okay. what kind of exciting features might be coming down the road for bands in town here? Because you're always innovating. Bands in town is always innovating and has always got something new coming. Yeah. Can you give us a little uh, teaser as to anything that might be getting an enhancement or something new? I would return the question to you, if I may, in, in, in the sense that do you see anything obvious that's, that's, that's missing, missing and that we should uh, focus on? And then I'll answer your question. G give me a top of your head two things. That well, you think you be paying I, I, I will say first off, the, the email list offering within Bands in Town is amazing, but it needs more bells and whistles. It okay. needs to support multiple email lists or segmented email listing. Um, it needs to provide a bit more data on, on the email usage and stuff like that. Um, but that's, that doesn't deter me from trying to steer every artist mm -hmm. to use it because Bands in Town has a free email list service. I mean, 100% yeah. free. 
Yeah, you have to use that. And I would just add to that. When I go to these artist pages, I would love to have access to add the latest video and the latest you know release right there because these tours are basically based or surrounding release cycles typically and yeah. i would love for anybody in there looking about live shows oh wow and wilson's got a new album out i didn't know that and then have that as well as the merch that would be on my wish list okay i will i will i will give you i'll give you one more <laughs> item for Brees. um because I use this extensively because I kind of feel like it's one of these hidden things that a lot of people don't use in bands in town. It's posting a message to all of your followers. What? It's, it's not, it's not sending an email. It's just, it's like a social media update yeah, yeah. that you yeah. can send and, and you know, you can, you can send it to all followers. You can send it to the RSVPs. You can geo target it. And it doesn't have to be a message just about a show or yeah. a tour date. You can send anything. I use that almost on a daily basis with my clients. Um, but here's the thing that, that I would love to see. Fans can leave comments on those posts. Mm -hmm. But as the artist, you can't respond to those comments on those posts. So if they ask a question, they think you're snubbing them because you can't reply. Oh, that's super interesting. That's that, that one. I keep that. Uh, that <laughs> so you see, the reason why I'm asking you questions is because you may know, and we, we've already had dialogue together, that we co-build stuff with the industry. We're not building stuff in a vacuum. We're trying to help and serve uh, a certain community, the artists that need it most. And so in, we're not going to you know, work on stuff without having exchange and discussion like that. I'm happy that this happens during your podcast. We 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 so the second idea for the second points you had on the comments is very interesting. The one on the the one that relates to emails, I would tell you that we are we are reviewing this thing because precisely we offer a free post to all fans, right? As you as we right. just said it. And including with a lot of filtering that are really interesting and valuable, such as post to RSVPs and post to, it still remains the number one functionality that people love over email for the reason that you mentioned. That that so we are waiting whether we should actually uh, create a premium version of the email that has more functionality because at the end of the day, competing on all fronts is hard, and we have to pick our battle and choose where we really want to be very very good. So emails is definitely something that is needed, but the fact that it's totally free makes it a little bit um, uh, elementary, or at least uh, it's it's a V1, it's a beta test actually. And so we are we are right now thinking of the best way to evolve this 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 product as a yeah. You know, I I, I think the email platform as it is right now is a great um, basic service that any artist of any level can get into without having to pay. But if an artist and some of my artists are very active about how they use email, yeah. um, you know, they're like, Oh, well, I want to send a message. Here's a, here's a list of all the people who bought our VIP tickets slash tour. Can you put that in our email list? Yeah, but yeah. I can't segment it right yeah. now. But I think to your point, maybe a, a, a premium version to get more features would be worth it for the artists that understand how to utilize it. Correct. That's that's exactly what we are we're looking at. We 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 have to to also choose where we put our resources. At the end of the day, Benzinton is fairly small company. We're doing and serving a lot of different stakeholders, as I said. So we cannot do everything uh, with the less same level of uh, let's say. Uh, sophistication than other companies that might have 50 people just working on one functionality right so 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 maybe that's that's one of the things that we are currently reviewing now i can tell you to give you to answer your question now on what's coming up next we are working on a waitlist function that is going to be interesting when the show is sold out trying Ooh. to help artists continue to capture first party data so that's i like that's that something. It's, I think it's live or if it's in beta phase right now. So, so it's, it's very much ready. Um, we, we are also looking at adding more messaging functionalities. 
um, that, that may come still uh, as part of the current uh, offering. And we are putting a lot of efforts to develop more offers for the venues. As I said, this was a stakeholder that was not, is so important to our communities, but which we did not serve very well until last year. So we launched recently a subscription for venues, which automate the marketing of all of their shows. So they can choose to subscribe based on their capacity and they will get all of the shows of all of the artists promoted to all the core followers of uh, such artists. So it's a pretty yeah. powerful integration with the venue world. And that's, that's what we are growing right now. And that's, Something that will obviously benefit the entire community, uh, hopefully. Yeah. Um, we, we have more to come on that front. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Well, Fabrice, congratulations on all the innovations, especially the Spotify integration. I think that's, that's massive. Um, tell our audience, where can they learn more about bands in town, where, where all the different you know, innovations, but also just how to use it, how to get the app, how to learn more about it? Where should they go? Yeah, they should go to artist.benzintown.com where there are tutorials. It, uh, you have descriptions of all the integration, including Spotify and in detail how it works. So, and, and at the end of the day, they, they you know, if we also have um, a great support team. So if there is a, a specific issues, they should also know that there is there are humans behind Benzintown. We're not as... Yeah. You know, it's yeah, you do, you do have... you. Jay, Jay and I just did an episode last week about customer service, and I will attest, Bands and Towns got great customer service. You, oh, you respond very quickly you, when you I've got the, issues. The team will love this part of the podcast. <laughs> I, I, it's I mean, so it, 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 it's so it's so important to us because it can make or break whether Absolutely. you work with a company or not, 100%. whether you can get support. And yeah, mm. I, I've always gotten great response from Bands and Town Me artist too. support. Amazing, amazing! I'll yeah. share that right away, right after this call. Yeah, we're uh, <laughs> we're big it. fans, thank Fabrice. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day. Um, like Mike and I talk about you guys all the time because it, it definitely is one of those indispensable tools that we use personally and professionally every single day. Every so, day. Yep. Look, thank you, very, Fabrice. We're very, very honored by your common support and it's it's definitely the type of uh, feedback we need we need also the challenging feedback because as i said we like to co-build it with the industry so we are we are also open to more challenging feedback but in any case it's a small team that is just passionate about live music that lives for live music so All right. hopefully we can do some good things together thank you for breeze right. thank you for breeze appreciate it cheers Bye -bye. I, I always love talking about bands in town, Jay. I mean, we we probably mention them, how we use them on a weekly basis, I would guess. Absolutely. Yeah. And how many platforms are there out there, Mike, that you use every single day or as often as you use bands in town? I'm sure there's a few of them, but you could probably count them on one hand. Well, the ones I do are, are social networks. Yeah. And, and what I tell a lot of artists and clients is, you know, the messaging, the communication through bands in town doesn't play the algorithm game. It, it, you right. know, you, 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 you got a quarter of a million people liking your Facebook page. That's awesome. Brag about it all you want. But when you yeah. post a message, 1% of those people yeah. Good luck are going to actually those. get it. Yeah, that's you right. And the only way you'll yeah. reach a quarter million is if you pay the social network platform some advertising money to go reach them. And, yeah. and and then you still probably won't ever reach everybody. Who Not like everyone, one. right? And then what you're referring to is so important, and that is that Bands in Town is one of those only platforms where if you have 10,000 followers, you can message all 10,000 of those followers for free. Uh, yes, and, and, and with the caveat, of course, each of those followers can change their notifications from the app and all that other stuff. That's there's right. no out al there's no algorithm in bands in town that says well we don't think your post is that interesting and therefore we're not going to send it to all of your followers that isn't the game that bands in town plays no. you you get your whole fan base and yeah. you own your fan base which jay to what happened earlier this week well, tell Facebook talk about what happened early yeah, yeah exactly earlier this week for about what two and a half hours Facebook. At least. Instagram threads all went down, completely down. 
just log you out, couldn't log back in. Um, and then the next day, LinkedIn went down <laughs> for an hour or so. Right, right. Um, and that's just a reminder, everybody. Don't rely on those social networks for everything you do, because if they disappear, yeah. what what can you do? I've got my client set up that I could turn around and still send out a message to 80,000 followers on bands in town. Now, granted, someone's going to go, well, what if bands in town goes down? Yes. What if everybody goes down? Nothing's going to work. But the point Diversify, is, you know? yes, yeah. don't put all of your eggs in one basket. There it is. That's it. And especially a basket where you do not own the data. You don't yeah. own the people who like your Instagram, your Facebook threads, whatever. You don't own them. You don't even know who they are. As Fabrice said, bands in town, you own your data. That's your data. You can you can export that data. You can take it and go somewhere else. Yeah. So that's that's the lesson to be learned from this outage earlier this week is, you know, make sure you got ways to communicate to people. What if what if Facebook went down not for just two and a half hours, but went down for two and a half days? Yeah. You'd and you were planning to announce it, and you were planning to announce a tour. And all you were going to do was announce it on Facebook and Instagram. Well, guess what? Your yeah. tour didn't get announced. Yeah. You need a broader strategy for sure. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, you know, we, we love bands in town. It's, it's, it's so useful. I use it yeah. every single day. Yeah, I do too. Um, all right. So once again, just a quick shout out to Bruce and everybody at Hypebot and Bands in Town for all you do to support and help us. <laughs> Excuse me. Coming off of COVID here, people, so my throat is... <laughs> you did pretty well today, all things considered. Yeah, yeah, this is the first day in about five days that I've been yeah, actually the show talking must go and on. my voice yeah. is feeling. Yeah. All right. Um, and, and, of course, to our sponsors, Bandzoogle.com and Discmakers.com. So that's it. We'll see everybody next week. Industry professionals listen to the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. If you have a product or service and would like to reach this audience... Get in touch with Michael or Jay to discuss sponsorship opportunities. For Music Biz Weekly, provided by LarryDavisVoice.com.